Hello, this is Bunting, and today I'm going to be showing you some Eprom and G. Jones style sound design using Ableton and Vital. Alright, so seems like a lot, but you'll see there's just a few tricks you need to employ to get this kind of sound. The first, as is common in many kind of freeform based things, is this distorted sub. So right here, this is just your typical everyday 808, thanks to Cymatics, you know. But what I did, I just threw on a saturator, saturator, just Ableton saturator, turn up the drive, to a point I thought it was nice and crispy, turn up the bass as well. And then after that, to kind of smooth it out, keep some of the high harmonics, but not all of them. Turn down that dry wet. And that dry wet really makes these kind of basses. A lot of the times before, I would just like, all right, it's fat, but where'd all of the sub go? That brings it right back. It's nice, you know? Okay. And I guess the next thing I should go over this G. Jonesy style lead. Just this sine wave jumping all over the place through the octaves. So like I said, this is a sine wave, yes? Your typical sine wave with a plucky envelope, you know, sustain, decay, and release down. But this jumping effect, you get it from going under pitch, enabling transpose snap. So this makes it so, let me just play this for you. You see how now I'm modulating the pitch with these LFOs? It's bending all over the place, but the moment you click this, it jumps in perfect octaves. And if you put this in this, it jumps between all those notes, which can be a cool effect, but I just went in octaves. And yes, this is just a sine wave from basic shapes. Additionally, to add some more harmonics, I introduced some soft clip distortion, just turned it on, turned the drive up. Also multiband compressed it with the attack and release up and to give it some spacious spaciousness spacious I added some reverb. Sounds awesome, cool, all that. And cut out the lows so it's not interfering too much. You know the deal. I guess the next thing I'll show you is this kind of crazy thing here, which is thanks to Granulator 2. Now I'm actually going to come back to this because I use more granular synthesis up here. Right here. But for now I'll just quickly go over these little bits here. G. Jones especially likes his cute little female vocal samples, especially with some weird processing. For this weird processing, I just have a vocoder, right? And I pretty much turn the bands down to four. Gives it an interesting effect. And the vocoder itself gives it a cool thing. OTT. Put the time up just to bring it all out. And some chorus with the feedback up. Gives it this weird kind of metallic effect. And this delay on ping pong, on time. Just tickling your ears with the dry wet down. Awesome. Next, this kind of fill bass, bringing us up to the big bass. This is just the same 808. It's just volume shaped upwards. And with that, I also amplified it and clipped it and all that jazz. That's what's nothing. Pretty, pretty basic, pretty boring. If you add this amp on boost mode, just bring so much more to it. And you add the saturator on analog clip mode, even more awesome stuff. Oh, and also for some added movement, I'm gonna cut out that, those kinda way too tubby mids. This notch filter. You'll hear a lot of this type of sound, these distorted sine waves, very common in Eprom, G. Jonesy stuff. They're all over the place. Now the next thing I'll get to, which is also all over Eprom G. Jonesy stuff, is just basic shapes. So right here we have 
the classic, the OG, initialize patch, your saw wave. Amazing. This is just literally a saw wave. I just turned down the pitch so I could put it down an octave. And to, for the added beef, compressor on multiband. Attack and release up. And the soft clip. And also reverb. They use that. They use reverbs on their basses. It's kind of cool. And this response bass here, the wum wum. This is what do you know. It's a distorted sine wave having a grand old time being filtered. Let me just turn off everything so I can show you. So starting off with your basic sine wave, and then I would take this envelope, drag it back, turn it to envelope mode. Well, it's an LFO. Turn it to envelope mode. So it only triggers once or when it's hit. I don't want it re-triggering whenever it pleases, only when I tell it to, only when a new MIDI note hits. And that's on 8th frequency and plucky fied. And right here, I put on a filter with the drive up. And it's important that it's on ladder, because these other drives just do not cut it. But this gives you some nice squelchiness, especially with that resonance up a tiny bit. Awesome. And then to bring it out even more, distortion and compressor. I believe you can hear this type of sound in Eprom's secret technique, so I decided to throw it in there. And before I show you this granular madness that G. Jones and Eprom are both so well known for, I'll show you this little reverse reverb. They use a tiny bit of this, not crazy. I mean, pretty much every producer uses this, what can I say? But this right here, I'll show you the quick trickly. <laughs> the quick trickly. The trick trickly. How about that? So what you want to do, just throw on your reverb, turn your dry wet up, turn your decay up, and then right click freeze your track. You can do this in any doll with just wet reverb and bouncing the audio. Plenty of other tutorials on this if you want to go into that. And freeze tail right here. You can cut out the end. Do whatever with it, and you click reverse right here, and it makes a great kind of riser effect. Great for just bringing in some sounds as a riser, as a little sweep, as anything you want it to be. It's a cool effect and great to use. Versatile. And now for the secret sauce. So for this, first of all, you need Max for Life Granulator. I believe if you have Ableton Suite, you can get it for free. A while back, before I had Ableton Suite, I was able to find it for free on some website. It wasn't sketchy. It was just like the, the guy himself who made its website. I don't know. Anyways, let me just show you what the fuck is going on. So this is what I originally started with. A basic shape square wave. Amazing, right? Let me just initialize this. And I want it as low as possible, so... Just hold shift and click that until you get it as deep as you can without it sounding too terrible. Basic shapes, square wave. But knowing this is going in the granulator, I wanted more movement than just eh. So for that, I turned up our unison, turned down our detune. Cool, that's a bit of movement, but when you turn down this randomization, get this crazy phasing effect that's just freaking sick, gnarly, and all those adjectives. Compressor and multiband, beef it up, distortion, beef it up, and reverb, space it up. So after that, I just froze that to audio, like I did before, just freeze track. And I got this lovely sample to be thrown into the washing machine known as Granulator. And let me just show you kind of what the workflow for this is. It's pretty much just fuck with knobs. Spoiler alert. All right. So right here you have your grains, right? Let me turn off scan. This is what it starts like. OK, I'm on the wrong thing. Fuck. OK, let's just switch those out. Nobody saw that. This is what it starts off like, right, with your granulator. And right here you have grain. And 
this changes how big part, how big a piece of the sample gets replayed. You can see the little space right there. And as I'm dragging it around, it's automating this file position. You can change where in the sample it plays. Now spray here makes it go outside of your boundary by a set amount of seconds. You can have it go everywhere, you can have it go nowhere, just clicking that to turn it off. But where what I like to do in this and what also at Prom and G Jones like to do, like this scan feature. They do use just this basic kind of stuff quite often for some wonky bases. But when you turn on scan, it filters through, well not filters, but it scrolls through your sample, right? Based on the time here. It's faster versus slower scanning through. Okay? And then after this, you have some more features to mess with. You especially want to mess with this um, FM. Another thing is, by default, it has a pretty high release on, which you don't really want, it kind of just messes everything up, honestly, so you want to turn that down. But FM here, just click on that FM, turn around your frequency, turn up your FM. You can just get so many cool sounds from this. And once I got a sound I was comfortable with, comfortable with, that I loved, I wanted some further movement with this auto filter on notch mode just sweeping around thanks to this rate and LFO turned all the way up. Awesome. Now let's just go back to our previous sound. And this is pretty similar. Same kind of thing except no notch filter, but it does have this auto pan phasing up between your ears. The the boys at Prom and G. Jones love to use those, too. This is yet another granulator thing. All this magic happens with this FM here. Without it, it sounds like terrible. But another thing I mess with is the pitch. See, I just turn that down. It brings it right back. And with some auto pan on it, you get an awesome player. And I just turned this off using this mode here, so I didn't need to redraw the LFO, I mean the automation thing. Okay. Okay, there's a lot of reverb on that, that was unintentional. Okay, please go away, sorry. And yeah, okay. This is yet another use of the granulator but has some frequency shifter awesomeness going on. Just change my rate around and turn up the amount. You can hear a lot of stuff like that in G. Jones, like especially like Fuck What You Heard and older stuff, Krabby Patty Secret Formula, stuff like that, you'll hear that effect. It's freaking awesome to layer with a fatty, distorted sub. Of course, up top, none other than the Amen break. They love that sample for whatever reason. And of course, feel free to like bounce all these to audio, like bounce whatever you want to audio and just chop it up, dice it up, chop and screw it as they say, and have a lot of fun with it because glitchy stuff is, is great in this style, to say the least. <laughs> Overall, a lot of basic shapes and distorted sine waves, right? Mess with your different saturation settings. And in addition to that, lots of granulator madness. It doesn't just have to be a bass in here. You can throw a whole melody in here. Like, watch, watch this. So let's duplicate this. Freeze that boy. It's cooking up. Taking its time, okay flatten and put this in a new track here new midi track and get our granulator because what you should hear is something quite familiar 
Let's just drag this in. Put her a note down. Okay. Come on. You gonna you gonna play for us? No, because the final position must be moved. Sounds familiar, right? Put granulator on anything. Flume also uses granulator a lot. It's just a crazy trippy effect to use on anything. It's like magic. All right. That about covers it. Long video. Hope you were able to grasp some of the things I did in this video. Spark notes, like I said, sine waves, basic shapes, distortion, granulator, and five. Have fun, as always. That's what it's all about here in sound design land. Thanks for tuning in. This is Bunting, as you probably know. If you like the video, leave a like. Any questions or suggestions for future videos and all that jazz, all that jazz, you know what I'm saying? Um, leave those in the comments. If you want to see more of this, subscribe and also hit the bell icon so you get notified when I upload some new delicious sound design content. Peace out.